Good morning, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video. It's been a couple of days. I really don't really have much to say. I haven't been reading anything different than I haven't shown in previous videos. I'm just sitting here this morning on a Sunday, the last Sunday of January 2021. It is 9.04 in the morning here in West Michigan. It is January the 31st. Tomorrow will be February the 1st, 2021, a Monday in the flow of existence. Yeah, I'm just sitting here having writing in my paper diary. I'm on page 108 for the year 2021. Yeah, I've written over 100 pages this month. Uh, I don't know if that's normal or abnormal. I was going to go and see what I wrote back in January of 2020, but I don't want to go down the lower level and dig through piles and piles of old diaries. So I'm not going to really show many books this morning. I'm just sitting here saying good morning, have a good new week. Hope you're all doing well in these troublesome times of the COVID-19 worldwide plague. Yeah, the Lord's been gracious and merciful to us. I, I haven't gotten sick with the plague. Even though we have people, we've known many people who have got COVID. Uh, none have died thus far that we know of. But, um, so yeah, I am right, I'm reading this morning, I've shown this, this is volume, this is the life of Jesus Christ, part one, volume one, chapters one through 40, by Laudoff of Saxony. Laudoff. So, Lovdov? I mean, Lovkov? I can't not pronounce it. I keep meaning to go online and hear a translation of this name. Someone in comment in one of my videos, and my wife can pronounce this name perfectly, and I just, see, I, I can't sound out words or pronunciation. I have to remember in my mind where I've heard the name or the word spoken. Uh, if I can't, if I can't remember hearing it, then I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Lopkoff of Saxony? I don't know. It should, it should bug me to the point where I just would sit down and spend like an hour just going over and repeating, repeating, repeating the name. But I've been reading this this morning on the life of Jesus Christ, and I'm at the birth of the Savior. Now, this is a four-volume translation, and it was written to be a devotional manual that a person not a lay person or a nun or a monk would sit down and read this and focus on one scene of the life of Jesus Christ. And so now we're looking at his birth, which is recorded here in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. I just thought I'd just read it. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was ma first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David 
to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. <clears throat> and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. <clears throat> and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. Good. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them unto heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see these things which is come to pass, which the Lord has made unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which were told them concerning this child. And they all heard it, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. So you remember what it says when the angel Gabriel came to, to Mary and pronounced that the Holy Spirit would overshadow her and that she would conceive a child. It says, uh, And the angel said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which is born shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So I was reading that, and then I was reading uh, these meditations. It says here, I just read from just read from the book. Just from, I also have been reading "Looking Into Jesus" by Isaac Ambrose. I look. He goes to the same. He goes to the same chronological order of the life of Christ, and I I compare the two to see how they approach looking at the life of Christ. This is late medieval. This is 16th century, 17th century English Puritan looking at the life of Christ, looking unto Jesus. It says, reading this, from what has just been said, you can see that Christ is already teaching by example the state of perfection consists in humility austerity and poverty. With the psalmist he can truly say, I am poor and labors from my youth. In this way he condemns the honors and pomp of this world and luxuries and, and cardinal delights and above all riches and excessive possessions. And Psalm explains, quote, O dignity, one, o dignity worthy of love and admiration, God of ineffable glory, who designed to become worthless worm, Lord of creation, who appeared as our fellow slave, who became little so that you could be like us and be our brother. You rule the universe and lack nothing, but you chose to taste the most abject poverty from the very moment of your birth. As scripture says, when you were born, there was no room in the inn, no crib to receive your tender body. Rather, you hold the earth in the palm of your hand, were wrapped in bits of cloth and laid in the common feeding trough 
of a dirty stable borrowed by your mother from rough animals. Be consoled, be consoled, all you who live in squalid poverty. God himself shares your destitution. He was not cursed in luxurious bed, nor was he found in the land of them that live in delights. And you rich, oh how, how can you who are really nothing more than clay and mire boast of your delicate gilted beds when the king of kings preferred to lay his head upon a pile of straw? How can you with your silk sheets and down comforters reject a hard bed when that tender little infant whose tiny hands wields power over all kingdoms chose to sleep on a prickly straw that served as fowler for beast, end of quote. Bernard, for his part, says, quote, The silent infancy of Christ will not console the talkative. His tears will not console the bolsterous. His swaddling clothes will not console those who parade about in elegant garments. The stable and manager, manger will not console those who love best seats in the synagogues. The joy of the new light, the birth of the Savior, was announced to shepherds who kept watch over their flocks. Poor, hard-working men, not you, not you rich who have con consolation here below. End of quote. <clears throat> and then you read, it's interesting how Isaac Ambrose and how he describes this birth of Christ. He says, This is, I'm just going to pick a paragraph from looking into Jesus. Six, consider the birth of Christ, the man, the man God, God man, who in his div divine generation was the Son of God, and his human generation was born in a stable for the saving of the children of men who were as the ox and mule, having no understanding. It were a fruitful meditation to consider over and over the sweet resemblance of Christ being a vine. Methinks I hear the vine of my voice of my beloved. Rise up, my love. The fig tree put forth the green figs. <coughs> Excuse me. And with the tender grapes gives a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. If Christ knocks at the door, who will not awake and arise? If Christ comes in view, you will not who will not look unto Jesus? If Christ the vine calls us to come see the vine with the tender grape, who will not taste the goodness and smell the sweetness? And after a little taste of that goodness and sweetness that is in him, who will not long after more till we come from the first fruits to the, first, to the last fruits of the Spirit, even to those visions and fruitions of Christ and glory? Consider, O my soul, this vine, till thou hast brought Christ near and closed unto thyself. Suppose thy heart the garden wherein this vine was planted, wherein it budded, blossom, and bear fruit. Suppose the Holy Ghost to come upon thee and to form and fashion in thee Jesus Christ. Thus Paul bespeaks to the Galatians, my little children, whom I travail and birth again, and to Christ be formed in you. Would not this effect, would not the whole soul be taken up with this? Come, receive Christ into thy soul. If that work be done, if Christ be formed in thee, O oh, cherish him. I speak of the spiritual birth. O oh, keep him in thy heart. Let him there bud and blossom and bear fruit. Let him feel thy, fill thy soul with his divine graces. O oh, thou comest, say fervently, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Galatians 2.20 Oh, that this were the issue of thy meditation on Christ's birth, even while thou art going with the shepherds to Bethlehem, and there findest thy Savior lying in a, in a trough, that thou wouldest bring him thence and make thy heart to be his cradle. I would not give a farthing for the meditation merely on the history of Christ's birth, either draw virtue from him by fe feeling within or thy meditation will be fruitless. 7. Consider these few consequences after Christ's birth. Every action of Christ is our instruction. 
Here are many particulars, but none in vain. Christ is considered under such a variety of notions that he was, that he is still sweet after all. If it be possible, O my soul, that thou shouldst tire thyself in the contemplation of Jesus Christ, if one flower yield thee, thee not pleasure or delight, go to a second, a third. Observe how the bees gather honey after a while that they, after, after a while that they have sucked one flower, they go to another. So for a while observe the circumcision of Jesus Christ and suck there, gather some honey out of that flower. Christ had never been circumcised, but that same might be done to our souls that was done to his body. Oh, that the same Christ would do that in us that was done to him for us. Again, observe Christ's present presentation in the temple. This was how the law, this was the law of those that first opened the womb. Now Christ was the firstborn of Mary, indeed the firstborn of all creatures. And he was concentrated unto God that by him we might be concentrated and made holy. And by him we might be accepted when we were offered unto the Lord. Again, observe Christ's flight into Egypt. Though the infancy is usually mo most quiet and devoid of trouble, yet here life and toil began together. And see how speedily this comes after dedication unto God. At last, at last, we are no sooner born again than we are persecuted. If the church tra travail and bring forth a male, she is in danger of the dragon's streams. Again, observe Christ's return to Judea. He was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matthew 15, 24. With them alone he was personally conversed in his ministry, in which respect he was called a, ma a minister of circumcision, Romans 15, 8. And where should he be trained and show himself but amongst them to whom God had sent him? The gospel first began there as a preparation to it. Christ now in his childhood returns thither. Again, observe Christ is disputing with the doctors in the temple. In his very non-age, Christ gives a taste of his future proof. See how, early, see how early his divine graces put forth themselves. In him were hid, said the apostle, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Galatians 2.3 All the treasures were hid in him, yet some of these treasures appeared very early betimes, his wisdom in his very infancy is admired at, nor is it without our profit. For of God is made unto us, made unto, for for of God he is made unto made wisdom unto us. First Corinthians one thirty. Again, observe how he spent the remainder of his youth. In all his examples, he met our instructions. He went down with his parents and was subject to them. He was not idly bred, but serves his gener generation in the poor way of a carpenter. He is every way good for a man to bear God's yoke, even his infancy. Lamentations 3.27 Christ and his hardships of life and in strict observance of the law, both of God and of nature. See, O my soul, what with a world of matter he is before thee to consider of. Here is Jesus under many notions. Here is the enunciation of Jesus, the conception of Jesus, the duplicity of nature in Jesus, the real distinction, the wonderful union, the nativity of Jesus, together with some consequences after it. Go over these with often and frequent thoughts, with some consequences after it. Go over these with often and frequent thoughts. Give not over till thou feelest thy heart begin to warm, True meditation is as is the billows of the soul that does kindle and inflame holy affections and by renewed and more forcible thoughts as being renewed and stronger blast, it does renew and increase the flame. So he's just talking about the prophet of meditating upon the life of Jesus Christ. He says, Go over these with often and frequent thoughts. Give not over till thou feelest thy heart begin to warm. True meditation is as the billows of the soul that does kindle and inflame holy affections, and by renewed and more forcible thoughts, as by renewed and stronger blast, it does renew and increase the flame. 
So that's what the prophet, that's what you're supposed to do when you read the life of Christ. You meditate upon all the different events of his life, from his, the, the Virgin Mary being told of, of the, bearing the Son of God, and about his birth, and then you read about his circumcision, and him going into the temple, and then you read about his ministry, and then you read about his teachings on the Sermon on the Mount, for example, and then you read about leading up his to his crucifixion, and you read about his resurrection and his ascension, and now we spent here meditating upon his session at the right hand of God as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you meditate upon these things, and you read these in the Gospels, and you meditate and you seek by the Holy Spirit to have your affections inflamed because that's what's going to motivate you in your Christian life. What's going to make you persevere, overcome temptations and trials and resist the flesh? It's that you have your love has been has increased, increased, increased as you meditate upon Christ and what he did for us and how he came, he would he humbled himself and took upon him form of a servant and he bore the sufferings of the cross, the death and dying for us on the cross that we might be forgiven of our sins and declared righteous and then receive the gift of eternal life and become born again by the work of the Holy Spirit. So these kind of things are on my mind this morning. I thought I'd just read to you what I've been reading in the morning, looking into Jesus by Isaac Ambrose and reading The Life of Jesus Christ by Lofnell or Lawnell, I can't pronounce of Saxony. So I hope you had a good weekend, you had a, that you have a good new week, a good reading week. And I will sign off. Thank you for the comments, the new subscribers, and stay safe, wear your mask, keep social distancing, stay home if you're sick. And until next time, bye.